jazz. Jazz. What's, What's your jazz? Jazz. jazz? Tell What's me about your jazz. Your jazz. And so I said, I don't, I don't believe that there's no, there's no jazz bands in Nairobi. <laughs> there's always been a jazz fan base in Kenya. The consumer has always been there, but the product, the jazz product, has, has not. We are much those two. Jazz has steadily gained acceptance in Kenya, from the privileged few to a massive crowd of dedicated fans, with weekly jazz shows on radio and live jazz performances in selected hotels, clubs and restaurants. This artistic instrumental genre of music has made its mark.
Jazz has gained a following slowly yet steadily. This exponential growth has meant one thing, demand. A culture of jazz has been embraced by upcoming musicians and bands, each carving a niche for themselves and developing a style that makes them unique and relevant. Uh, on the other side of the house we had a computer and 
then I'm just like, like okay. music is always playing. Like even when we're watching TV, he's listening to Norman Brown or George Benson and Clue, you know those guys. So you just pick up it, and we had instruments in the house as well. Jazz in Kenya is at a good place today, thanks to the generous support from various partners from different industries. The Safaricom Jazz Festival has given jazz lovers in Kenya a platform to enjoy and appreciate the beauty of jazz, with a good blend of top Kenyan acts and internationally acclaimed jazz icons, the festival has been able to inspire the growth of skill and musicianship. It has been able to rapidly build an audience for jazz in a way that no one had imagined possible. Ladies and gentlemen, Afro Saint Pat!
Kakwelam is one of the first saxophonists I listened to. Uh, his album, The Gospel According to Jazz, that's what started me off on this whole jazz journey. So I am ecstatic. I've been on his Instagram every day saying, I can't wait for you to come to Kenya. I can't wait for you to come. He hasn't replied or anything yet, but uh, I'm hopeful. For a long time, jazz in Kenya was regarded as rich folk music. In the olden days, it was played in posh hotels to a small hand-picked audience. Safaricom and other key partners have moved jazz into the streets of Nairobi through projects such as the Ghetto Classics, making it accessible to one and all. In Kenya, generally, classical music is very, very small, which makes those kids even more unique as in the number of players compared to all the other uh, instruments. Um, and so sometimes we struggle to, to get teachers. For instance, strings are a big issue. And currently what we do is we actually have Skype lessons every Saturday with some teachers in Germany. Um, technology allows these students to actually um, learn their instruments. Um, as well as some saxophone Skype lessons we have. But the rest um, we learn here. We've had many iterations and, and the way we teach and our members we, you know, our struggle is to get a very good teacher to give us their Sunday afternoon to come to Karagosho for very little money to come and teach. It really is, is a passion. And, but now we are at the advantage that we have some senior members because now what we do is we invest heavily in them um, and then they come and teach the younger kids. My name is Pioche. I have been playing food for two years and I love jazz. That's all. <laughs> I've been playing saxophone for two years. And I love jazz. It's the best music in the world. Uh, for us, music uh, it has been a, a, major, like a major, major tool for social change in our community. We have, we have transformed life. How many of the young kids you are seeing here? Uh, before they joined the class, they were just after school doing nothing, you know. They never knew that they have they have talent, they can interact, they can, they can interact together. And also uh, jazz festival coming into our community, it has helped us to increase the number of the players. Before the jazz festival, the number was very was quite smaller. Have you had many of the players one year, one year and a half? So after the jazz festival we saw a very tremendous growth in our in our community. And we always appreciate uh, whenever you have any visitors, the international jazz artists, to come share the, the knowledge with the kids to motivate them and show them that 
there are possibilities. Just keep on working. Kirk Wallam, a legendary American smooth jazz saxophonist, got the opportunity to visit Kenya at the start of his 2015 Christmas special tour, accompanied by a remarkable group of world-class musicians such as Gerald Albright, Norman Brown, and Shalea. Kirk brought to Kenya a gospel according to jazz. Wow, I am overwhelmed. Asante. Thank you very much. Um, this is just so wonderful. And, and there are no words, not in any language, to express how incredible you are. You have already inspired us to play music, you know, better. <laughs> um, my name is Kirk Whalem, and I have been playing the saxophone High saxophone and the flute. I play the flute as well. High flute and I play the clarinet, not very well, not as good as you. I have been playing the saxophone for forty-five years. Forty-three years. Forty-three years. Forty-three years. And um, I still practice a lot because you never learn all there is to know about any instrument. And when you love to do it, you don't mind doing it for 40, 50, 60 years, right? I bet you'll be still practicing in 60 years, won't you? You guys are amazing. Uh, I was expecting for everyone to say, you have been playing for maybe five years, 10 years, 15 years. When I started hearing almost a year, <laughs> I was like, okay, you gotta get to work. <laughs> but uh, I just wanna reiterate everything that's already been said. We're, I mean, we're, we, we felt welcome since we arrived, and uh, just, uh, we're, we're just so inspired with, by what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing, keep believing, and uh, that's it. Uh, keep making music. Here we go. Let's see if you guys know it. It might sound crazy what I'm about to say. Thank you. 
certainly want to hide it. But for us, we were able to see the dumb juxtaposed against the riches of this beauty and the culture of these beautiful kids. Uh, it, it was, I think it was that, more, more than anything, it was just that, to look this way and see, you know, squalor, and to look that way and see these beautiful smiles, and they're so excited mm -hmm. to play their instruments. Or it, it made me want to go practice my instrument, you know? <laughs> I mean, we were just, right? I mean, John, I'm a, I spoke with my wife back in the States early this morning. Uh, well, it's early this morning for me, so it was late at night for her. And that was the thing that stuck with me from that experience in particular, is um, just the reminder of the power of music. Yes. You know, um, I mean, that's the reason we're here. 
Bob, it's not because of, um, you know, it's the power of art. That's the reason why we're here in, in Kenya. And it was confirmed seeing these kids, and when, uh, um, our bass player, when they, his comment when we got up a chance, when we stood up and got a chance to speak was, we were surprised at how short a time many of the kids had been uh, working on this music. Right?
feeling out there, man, Rob? Are you feeling good out there? Let me hear you say it. So what's your jazz? Is it the smooth sounds from the saxophone? The journey of the emotions from the piano? The dramatic plucking of the double bass? Or the percussive rhythm of the drums? Jazz has proven to be more than just a type of sound. Jazz is freedom to express yourself. Jazz is therapy from all the negativity in the world. Jazz is culture. Jazz is a way of life. It's very interesting because now people would come who know nothing about jazz. They would come and they're converted from the religion, you know. You go once you realize that you know the benefits, you're like, actually I like this. So it is it is growing steadily. Uh, we hope we'll, we'll get more people this coming here to like uh, like jazz. And Kenyan jazz at, at such because the thing is if we don't build a home then, uh, then it means guys will just be coming. We'll never have our own headliners. What what is in five years? Of course, we want a Kenyan to have life. In three years, in two years, you know, we want a Kenyan band or a Kenyan musician to have life. Why can't you do that? We can't do it.